Yeah, really ready to to get some rest. This has been very taxing on me for the last nine games because every game has been a very tough game. I haven't gotten much sleep. Um, really proud to be 10 and two after this, these t first 12 games. Couldn't have imagined it being any better. You know, when I first set the schedule last year, um, kudos to Coach Stack Stackhouse with playing small ball all game and making it hard for us. They made shots in our building, controlled the game for the entire game, but I also want to commend my guys on coming back from down seven both times, or eight, we were down one time, and getting back into the game and winning the game. Benny, uh, you guys in the back. Obviously, you guys have knocked off a bunch of really, really good teams lately. Was there any aspect today in your mind of your guys maybe feeling yourselves or not taking them seriously enough? I don't think it was feeling ourselves. I think that the guys are tired. You know, we've been we've been rolling. There hasn't been any rest for the uh, rest for the weary. Meaning, like we've had a couple weeks off, but we prepared very hard those weeks for those teams because we knew we needed to beat them. And like I said, I'm not taking anything away from Vandy. This was a hard schedule, and at the end of this schedule, right before Christmas, guys are just tired. You know, I just looked at it today. It's like we didn't, we couldn't muster up the energy, even though we gave all the warning signs, and we talked about you know finishing this game, but we picked up enough energy to get back into the game in that second half before it got too late and won this game. So I'm super proud of these guys. Got a two-parter, Coach. Um, you went on a 12-0 run in the second half again defensively. What were you able to do and not let them do? And also, I need some mid-season report cards on offense, defense, and uh, chemistry. Yeah, um, what we did in the second half was just speed them up. And what they didn't do was make shots during that time that we sped them up. We made shots, they didn't. And um, the mid-season report card offensively is a D. Yes, a D. Defensively, I would say an A. We're just not sharing the ball enough. That's why I say it's a D. We're not sharing the ball. We're not getting the ball up the court. We got guys that are scoring, like David Jones is on a streak that's unreal. But we're not getting enough assists, only nine assists. It needs to be 20. And that's when the offense is going to be humping. We gave ourselves a, a goal last year. It's going to be 20 assists. If we don't get the 20 assists, every game is going to be a struggle. We have got to get the ball up the court, and we got to get the ball moving from side to side, or else it's going to be our Achilles heel. Penny. Chemistry, I can say we can muster up enough during the game for it to work. The guys are trying to do the right thing. Uh, I'll say B plus, maybe A minus. Penny, you said uh, you talked about speeding them up to start the second yep. half. You come out, looks like you're going to take over and blow them away. Then you go to the subs. Was it because those guys were that winded that you had to make the replacements, you had to make the changes? Why when the momentum had changed at that point? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, when you're playing at that level and that speed, guys got tired, guys grabbing their shorts. You got you to sub, but the subs have to come in and do the same thing. You hate to do it, but if you don't, then they're going to take off. I mean, it just is what it is. You can't trap that much. We put ourselves behind the eight ball, and we had to, we had to go extremely fast for a long time, and none of those guys – we're able to do that. At the end, again, this is the end of a nine-game road trip. That's how I look at this. And it was hard. That's why we tried to shuffle more guys in, get fresher legs in. Penny, in the back. Obviously, the first half didn't go the way y'all wanted it to go. What was the message to the team at halftime? And then also, what was the message to the team after the game? Yeah, at halftime, I just said, guys, it's one of those games. We didn't want it to be this way. It's here now. What are we going to do about it? We know we can't let them come down and be methodical they kind of did what Virginia did, where they kind of walked the ball up the court, got into their offense, took 20 seconds off the clock, and then got to, tried to get a good look, go back, and then shrink the court. So I said, we got to speed it up. And um, after the game, I just told them, let's be proud of 10-2, and because that's phenomenal. And, uh, but let's also reflect on what we need to do better individually coming back to make us better, because we're going to have more games that are on this level than we did with the nine games, the eight games that we had were, were ranked teams. So... We'll have to be ready for that. Penny, along those lines, was this in a weird way a, a nice, you know, everyone looked at those other games as like tests for you guys. Was this in a weird way a nice test for you because the rest of the schedule is going to be, you're going to be favored, you're going to be, you know, and teams are going to give you their best shot and things like that. I think this was a blessing because of how we won the game. So now when we come back, we know we cannot, we can't let up. It was a, it was a test. Uh, obviously, the bigger games pose their own, test but this is as well because you got to muster up your energy you got to you got to play the right way you got to try to dominate the game and get the game over 
and it didn't happen, and you just got to keep fighting. So one thing I love about this team is we always find a way. And in this game, it was ugly for us. We found a way to win when we should have. Should have, they deserved to win that game the way that they played and the way that we played. Coach, let's talk about your early Christmas present, Naquan Tomlin. How would you like his performance today? Yeah, Naquan, it wasn't really fair to him. I love seeing him on the court. He doesn't know our system. Uh, he was rusty. Came out there and gave us eight points. Um, I thought it was phenomenal because, um, you know, he, everything was new. I can only imagine him playing 15 minutes and really not knowing the guys around him, not knowing the system and playing against a bandy team that's playing pretty good. And, um, but I was definitely, I'm definitely happy about that, uh, that early Christmas gift. Second, uh, second half, when you, you, were, you pressed your bigs at half court and you got the turnover and the dunk off it, did you breathe a sigh of relief there or, or were you still stressing out at that point? Did you feel no, like I, I, definitely, I definitely breathed a sigh of relief when Nick stole that ball and dunked it because I was like, okay, now we got some momentum and the momentum shifted in our direction. You guys started the second half on that 11-2 to two run, and it kind of looked like you guys were just going to start running away with it a little bit. Then Vanderbilt, they make their own adjustments. They make their own run. Uh, what do you think they did there to make that happen, and how do you think you responded? Well, we kept gambling. You know, we wanted to be more solid. And, again, they made shots. Um, Jason uh, Rivera-Torres came in the game. And in that stretch, I think he hit two or three threes made a four-point play that kept them in the, they, they kept them right back in the game. We have to learn how to be solid. You know, when you get up eight points, we worked our way to get back in. Now everything is keep everything in front of you. Uh, don't lose sight. Don't ball watch. Uh, be on your toes and be ready to play. And we weren't, and they got back into the game. I was hoping to push away 10, 11, 12, 13 points, but just didn't happen. Coach, um, your team – about that when they played it? Um, I don't know if it was so much of the physicality with, with, um, with Vandy more so than the game plan that they had. The game plan was to go under all ball screens, and we know exactly what to do when teams go under. And shocking, we didn't do it at all the entire first half. We did it a couple times in the second half and scored on it, but it needed to be every time. We already know what our counter is when teams go under our ball screens. And that lets you know mentally where we were because we didn't counter them at all maybe five times the entire game when it should have been every single time they went under, we're supposed to counter. And that's on Malcolm, that's on Nick, and then they, Laquan doesn't know to do that yet. So at the end of the day, you know, it was one of those games where we just, I don't know if the guys just thought we were going to make it, make it happen, and we didn't. And once we got into a fight, they thought we were going to eventually turn around and then it became a dog fight. If you make your free throws at the end and get a stop, the game's over. But I like that we've been in these close games because – that only builds character, man. Of course, I would have loved to push the way, but I love winning close games. It just gets you tougher. Petty, you would know better than us how much the foot injury affected Jaquan today, but just in general, got off to a really good start to the year, kind of been struggling of late, and then the injury as well. Where do you feel like he's at overall right now? I thought Jaquan was probably at 80% today because he was limping so badly yesterday. I don't even know how he played. I don't know what happened, how he got out there, and uh, still tried to do a an unbelievable job, but I know he was feeling that pain. And uh, David Jones missed three days in a row of practice because he's really sick. He's supposed to take a flight out today. He's not going to go on the flight. Probably got to get a couple IVs. He and Caleb both have been extremely sick. Caleb was dizzy the last couple days and didn't practice, like walked off the court, really concerns. And both of those guys got IV two days in a row, and I think David Jones is getting it right now. Don't know what bug that is or what's going on, but, you know, again, no excuses, but – Jaquan being injured, Caleb and David being sick, you know, they just weren't themselves today when it came to the energy part. Penny, now that you got a sample size, what do you think the challenge is going to be with um, kind of incorporating Naquan Tomlin, you know, midseason into these games? Yeah, I think that the challenge is going to be how fast he, his learning curve is with what we're trying to do. Us learning his game, him learning us, uh, him learning our style because at K-State they played – Totally different style. Like he gave up a point blank layup. He's used to downing the screens at K-State. Naturally, he did that, and the guy just went in and laid the ball up. We didn't have a low man. So it was supposed to be a corral. Everyone else knew that. We prepared him, but he only had a couple of days to prepare. So 
at the end of the day, I, I think the challenges are going to be his, his learning curve, watching film, getting in the gym, doing extra work. But once he gets up to speed, you can already tell he's going to be pretty special for us. And can you speak on uh, Jonathan Pierre, J.J. Taylor? What was up with their, uh, their absence? Yeah, just team rules. You know, team rules that, that were broken that, you know, they just got penalized for. Um, this is the third time this year, a, a, like a little guard has given you guys real trouble defensively. Um, you started doubling him late, and it seemed to have an effect. Is that the solution, is, or is, is I'm curious what your thoughts are just on that. It's something that's kind of cropped up now. Yeah, well, it started with Jackson State. I was watching that game at home, looking at Chase Adams, watching Chase Adams just pick us apart. And then I'll Doug with Michigan, little bitty guard, and then Octa, you forgot Doug, and then and the Ole Miss Murray. And then now today, you know, it's something that we just have to fix. I'm glad it's happening right now so that we can kind of get better with it and have a structure for that because those guys have been very successful against us with their speed. Penny, they, they actually did a good job challenging you guys at the rim and making it hard for you inside to score easy buckets. And you got shot under 40%, didn't have a great shooting day. But a sign of a good team, as you know, is how do you get the, how do you get the points? 35 free throw attempts. Is that something you're saying to them <clears throat> during timeouts, late in the game? Force the issue, get to the hole, draw the foul, get to the free throw line instead of just a, an open three that uh, may clank around. Is, is, are you trying to be aggressive with these guys? But you know, They seem like they get more aggressive as the game progresses. Yeah, so what happens is because we shoot so much, I tell the guys to shoot with confidence, and it just seems like that's what we settle for, as you can see, early in the game. And then when we're not making them, I start saying the timeouts, okay, we're not making threes. We got to get to the paint. We got to play off two feet. We got to finish strong. And that's what happens, you know, because I want those guys, I don't want them to be afraid to shoot because we shoot a lot, but also we have to be smart and mix it up. So, yeah, as the game goes on, I'm constantly saying, hey, we got to get to the line. You always want to win a rebound game and a free throw game. Penny, um, how many days, or I guess what's the mechanics of the, of the break? When do the guys come back? What's the plan over the next few well, days? Well, they're leaving, like, right now. Most of those guys have, like, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock flights leaving to go back home. They'll be back on the 27th that morning. Yep. And then it's right back to work? It's right back to work because we have Austin P coming in and then conference starts. So for me, it's a must-needed break. Like I said, this was a long stretch of not getting a lot of sleep, uh, a lot of pressure mentally and physically. So the guys just definitely deserve this break. And how about yourself? Are you just going to disconnect or are you going to keep grinding or – I think I'm going to take a couple of days just to disconnect because I never do that. Then after a couple of days, I'll get back to like studying us, trying to come up with better ways to be better, to guard smaller guards or, or do better on our man defense, and then uh, be ready for the guys to come back and, and get to work. Thank you.